for all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there, your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, Winter Guard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Man show here with Bellarmine Knights head coach Scott Davenport out of the A Sun. They'll be playing Kansas State this year. Coming down here to see those aisles up the road from here. So, Coach Davenport, how are you and your staff doing up there in Louisville, man? Everybody's good. Everybody's good. You know, the, these young guys keep they keep you good because they're resilient. No matter what you throw at them, it's like if you run a mile race and you get an eighth of a mile from the finish line and they go, "No, we're gonna run two miles." They're okay. They're okay. You know, they just – I think I think a true love for the game is an important part of recruiting because that's a talent. You know, when you care and when you're passionate, that's a talent. That's a skill, too. That's not just being able to run, jump, and put a ball in a basket. And um, I really, really appreciate our guys and their, their, their passion for the game. Now, Coach, let's go back to March here when everything kind of got shut down. How's that for you, for you and your team, man? I know you're probably getting ready for the tournament and, and everything that's kind of shut down and yeah. guys had to go home from being on campus, going virtual. So how was it for the your young men dealing with the adversity of the, of the pandemic then academically being at home and being virtual? How was that for you and your, your, your young men? Well, we've always had a philosophy here where – and it's built on over years. As a senior, you, you never want to take your jersey off for the last time. You know, it's Division II basketball. Uh, the likelihood of playing past college is it, not a guarantee. We've had 17 of them play beyond here, but 
it's surely not a guarantee. And we were in the middle of spring break. And you, you never want to take your jersey off for the last time, but you never want to take it off from playing with that group of teammates for the last time. So we're in spring break, and we had practice on that Thursday. At, we had film at 11.30, practice at 12.15, and then we were going over to have a team meal. Uh, we had a private room set up because the campus is closed, spring break. Mm -hmm. Come back, film that night. The next morning, we're going to get up, have practice at 10 o'clock, and then get on the bus and go to Indianapolis for the NCAA tournament. And in between practice ending at 2.45 and reporting at 5 o'clock to the meal, the tournament was we end up in a private room. Our families came. The staff's families came. We closed the door. And it was very, very emotional because those players, they never got to take their jersey off for the last time. They took it off in practice, went to have a meal. They're going to maybe get shots up that night, get ready. You know, the NCAA tournament, we're leaving the next day, and the season's canceled. It was tough. It was tough. And those four seniors, uh, Chris Palombizio, Alex Cook, Ben Wire, uh, Parker Chitty, were four tremendous, tremendous young men that I will always have just a, a, a unbelievable bit of pain for them because yes, they, they never got to take their jersey off for the last time. But the positive of it, we have 11 guys back from that team, and they have driven themselves every single day. And I think part of it is, it's that that emptiness they felt that afternoon in March. Most definitely, Coach. And, you know, I can only imagine for those young men, the gut punch. Because it's hearing, hearing you describe it, it hurts me for them. Because, you know, you want to have that last experience to say, hey, I played it to the, my last, and all of a sudden a pandemic comes, and it just wipes me out, and it's just over, like, so fast. Like, it's that snap of the finger, it's done. And it's it, it does leave you empty feeling inside, like, oh, my goodness, like, wow. But, but, you know, again, the resiliency of these young people, it's amazing how resilient they are. They are amazing. I, I've always been a, an advocate of young people because uh, I don't have any grandkids. I got one. I have a granddaughter that's two years old. Oh, wow. And, you know, I kid our players all the time that they're the answer. You know, she needs them. She needs them to be great. They can't just be okay. They got to be great. Because there's a lot of questions in society right now, a lot of levels. And these young people are the answer. Not, it's not me. These young people are the answer. So, you know, I've got great faith in them. And, and more than that, I, I got great admiration for what these young people do. They're, they're amazing. Now, Coach, how did you all handle them being at home, being back in, in their environments virtually? How was that this offseason of spring and summer here? How was I that? Should've, I should have taken all my investment capital that I own in the world invested in Zoom. <laughs> yes, you should have. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We, you know, we try to be as supportive and as creative from an academic standpoint, an athletic standpoint, a, a morale standpoint, you know, mentally, uh, as you could. We, we had Zoom calls, you name it. Uh, like I had it set up, but Alan Houston, who's a vice president of New York Knicks, who's an NBA great, played for me in high school. And Alan just turned 50 years old. I mean, oh, he's wow. from a totally different era. And Alan crashed one of our Zoom calls one day, and, and, and our players were, uh, you know, I kind of tipped them off. They knew about him, and they were going crazy and just, it, it wouldn't end. It kept going and kept going and kept going, and he's asking them questions, and and it, it, they're asking him thing. It was it was it was great. Uh, the city of Louisville's had a lot of unrest. We've had a very very difficult stretch, and the spokesman from our Louisville Metro Police Department is an African American, a gentleman named Dwight Mitchell. I've known Dwight for thirty five years, and Dwight joined a Zoom call one night, and he addressed a lot of issues point blank. He, he's the spokesman for the Louisville Metro Police Department. Oh, wow. I mean, something tragic happens, and he has to show up and give an explanation. And, and we've had, we, we had um, Dwight. Um, I, I've had former players join. I, we've done, we've watched motivational videos together. 
Uh, we've had people in the business sector join us, uh, people from the military who served our country, you name it, uh, just trying to keep everybody engaged. But most important, to be there for our guys. Uh, if it's once, twice, three times a week, just to be there for them. Again, mentally as well as physically. You know, the physical part, get them to where they can they can work on their body and their game, et cetera. Yeah, that's one thing, but but being a resource for them where they, they, they can feel very comfortable. Like, Coach, what do you think about our – man, Coach, what's going to happen with this? And try to keep them in tune to the news, to what's going on. You know, we encouraged them, stay engaged. Um, it's funny, everybody made this big issue about being registered to vote, and we had it done when we came back. Wow. We were way ahead of it. Yes, you we were. were. Way ahead of it. Well, I mean, we were like, hey, we had two players, and we said, okay, you got to get engaged, and this is, you know, you're going to do this. It's going to last a lifetime. So just different things. Believe me, when I had all that idle time on my mind, man, that, my mind was working, racing 100 miles an hour. Coach, do you take any time for yourself over the pandemic break? I know some coaches have told me they they to pick up new hobbies all over the pandemic. What about you? Did you take, take, take some time for yourself to kind of find something you want to do? No, I ran more miles. Ran I was more up miles. Between, I was up between 38 and 45 miles a week, and that's carried over. Wow. And, and that's amazing. I mean, I, I need to get on your regiment, Coach. <laughs> watch what you wish for now. You better watch out. Watch what you wish for. <laughs> hey, hey, Coach, I'm, I have my little stepper here, my little exercise bike in the little room. I, I feel bad now. It's riding 30 minutes on my bike a day. I need to get like Coach Davenport. That's, <laughs> that's, that's where I would get lost. I would get lost, and I'd be thinking, you know, who are we going to Zoom with? How are we going to do this? Let's talk to this guy. And, and, you know, the whole time, it, it, it went through, boss, it, it, it was three stages. The, the very first stage, it was like a, the longest snow day ever. You know, when you have a snow day and yes. school's canceled, you're real excited. You're like, man, I don't have to go to school. And that was kind of cool. But, you know, that, that didn't last. It, it lasted too long. Then the, the second stage I'll never forget, we had a Zoom, and I told our players, I said, you know, guys, this is, this is, these are very humbling times. These, are, these times are humbling us because think of it. We were having a Zoom, and I had 15 players and a staff, you know, Knoxville, Columbus, Ohio, uh, Evansville, Indiana, Louisville, Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, all over the Midwest. And we can all look at each other just like I'm looking at you right now. And I said, you know, guys, if I tell you to go on some scavenger hunt, all you got to do is put an address in your phone and you find it just like that. And we can do everything, right? I said, but we don't. We can't figure this out. We can't figure it out. I said, this is humbling times. Because we think we can do everything. You know, we can Zoom. Yes, we don't have to meet face-to-face. -face. Coach, we'll have a Zoom. But we couldn't figure this out. So we went from being, you know, like the longest snow day. We were excited. Then it was very, very humbling. And it was a very down time. And then I think the last stage, and in, in, in the way we're there to this day, is the smartest people in the world, in the entire world, can't figure this out. And they're trying 24-7. They're working at trying to come up with a vaccine and, and how we stop the spread and how we do this and, and all the entire world. And, you know, we, we can't figure this out. And that's tough. So you just, you kind of go back and you get in your bubble, so to speak, and just win the day. Just let's win the day. And I know that sounds coach cliche. I get it. But really, that's where we are right now. No, and it's and true, we just coach. keep. It is. It's it true. is. It, it's. It, it's very. I mean, the smartest people in the world can't figure this out, and they're working twenty four seven. So you know, we have to lean on each other, be there for each other, and, and understand priorities in terms of doing what's right, being disciplined, taking care of school, taking care of your body, and working on your basketball. Period. In the 
for me, coach, the positive in the pandemic is I'm able to see people I talk to. Now, it's not just the phone anymore. I can I see guys now I talk to like you and meet for the first time. I can see you and see me because, you know, that's the thing I told my godfather and my dad about this. I said, the only thing good about this is I can see my guests now. You know, the only thing that's good about this pandemic, I can see my guests now. It's not the, it's not the phone. Now, now I'll see you in person when I you come to Atlanta or I come to a game. You can see me now. Oh, okay, that's JR. He's a cool guy. He's a nice guy. See my demeanor. Yeah. And I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So that's something good about this is, is this right here. Well, I mean, you think about think about me personally. There was a time where because of precaution, we and she lives four minutes away and we were not allowed to see our granddaughter. Wow. She lives four minutes away. Wow. But, you know, we would Zoom with her, you know, so many. And, you know, she wasn't even two years old. And she's like, well, pop, pop, you know, and, you know, there are. But it, I think what will happen, it will make us appreciative, more appreciative of every minute of every day. And I hope, I hope through this, we become a more respectful, considerate society. I really do. I think if we respect the things we have, if we appreciate them, and, and we're more considerate of other people, maybe in the end, maybe it'll help us all. That that that's we've got to grab onto that. Yes, sir. And coach, let me ask you: It's for scheduling games. You know, you lost two weeks here. It's now the twenty fifth of November, and I know you're transitioning from D two to D one now in A Sun. How's trying to schedule games? Being able to raise money as well for the university. So, uh, how was that whole monster been for you? Well, it's now uh, 11, 12 minutes after eleven, and I came. Up, there's a radio doing live from our locker room today, and I think when I came up, it was about uh, 10:45. I don't think our schedules changed since then, but I haven't checked. Maybe it has. <laughs> the, you you have to be flexible, and you have to work with each other. But I will give college basketball credit. Dan Gabbett, the executive director of the NCAA of men's college basketball, has had a plan all along, and the A Sun had a plan all along. You know, football, I think, as being a football fan and a fan of college athletics, you know, way back in March, I think there was a certain mentality that, you know, we'll be okay. That, that's We're talking about September. We'll be fine. Then, then it was like, whoa, we better get ourselves together. Mm -hmm. Well, the NCAA football is run conference to conference. It's not run by a governing body like the NCAA basketball is. So I think Dan Gavitt, being in charge of it and taking over and saying, okay, here we're going to move back your, your beginning of practice and now we're going to move back our start date of games and we're going to, here's, we're going to work together. I think it's been so fluid, but it gives me a lot of hope because there's going to be setbacks. We've seen setbacks in football. Mm -hmm. Well, think about this. There's 356 Division I college basketball teams. I mean, it's law of averages. Oh, There's yeah. going to be setbacks. The first three weeks of college football, 22.3% of the games were either canceled or postponed. And that's a limited number, only playing once a week. We're talking 356 college basketball teams playing once or twice, maybe three times a week. So we're going to have to stay flexible. And, again, that's why Dan Gabbett put a minimum number of games, 13, a maximum number of games, you know, at 27. But I think um, we're trying to stay ahead of it and be as flexible and work together as much as we can. But it, it's difficult. Bo Braden on our staff has led us in that regard, and he has been a superstar, no doubt. And travel wise in the A Sun for you was not that bad because Lipscomb's in Nashville, two hours away from you. Atlanta is not that far from Louisville. North Alabama is not that far from Nashville. So, like, no. Liberty, the, you're right. Liberty. So, mer mer mercifully, you will have the your worst travel is probably going to be to Jacksonville and North Florida. If I be your your worst travel, probably. If and, I'm, and Gulf Coast. And, go, and Gulf Coast, Coast, yeah. So, that's it. So, you can probably get away with busing. Most games and having to fly to Florida. Well, right now we think there'll that. be two trips. Two trips will require flights. That's where we are right now. That's what it looks like. Uh, Non-conference, right? And you know, we're in a in a basketball-rich area here with a lot of you know a lot of colleges in the Midwest. So, yeah, we're trying to be as as 
prudent as we can and, and having a great schedule, but trying to also generate revenue for the athletic department. Now it's, it's a big task, but you know, we're our schedule, like I said, it hadn't changed since I came up here. At least they haven't told me. Now coach, the good thing about going D one now, you have 13 scholarships now in D T two, you had 10 that you can kind of split how you want to split them. So how's it been to, you know, you have a full 13 now and having, and everybody has some walk-ons. He had 11 guys already to so give them all scholarships now and add two more guys and have some walk-ons. How's that been for you? You know, Paul, that's amazing. JR, you're the first one to ask me that. Uh, it's more difficult. Let me tell you why. In Division Two, having 10, you could divide them. Two years ago, we had 17 because of the high level of academics. We literally had 17 in full scholarship. Last year, we had 16. Now, 13 means 13. So we, we were handcuffed. We had four seniors last year. Just do the math. That means we had one signing. I mean, we were handcuffed. And it'll take us uh, two or three recruiting cycles to get back to where we're bringing in normal sized classes. And it's been very difficult. It's been incredibly difficult. You're the first person to ask me that. That's a great question. Yeah, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I really do care about the smaller schools because I know a lot of the power fives get all the club, but the little, the little oh, guys yeah. need, need some club too. You know, I want to be a, a champion for you guys because I came from Tennessee State University, so I know how it is in a low right. major school. I know how it is. You know, I've seen what resources are, our facilities. I know what a kid in a lower, lower, lower major school has to deal with at D1. I've seen D2 as well. I've seen it right in my face. But let's go down, down the road before they came up. I have saw it. So I, I know how it is for you guys making a transition up to D1. So I really feel for you guys and I kind of want people to understand it. It's not easy as you think this, oh, we're going D1. A lot of things you have to kind of transition into and, and go over to get there and make it become a full member as well. Oh, it's 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 an incredible, I call it a good busy though. It's a good busy. I mean, it, it you know, and I'll say this to you, Jared, last year, looking back, I think will end up being the most difficult year I'll ever coach in my life. And, you know, and I coached this as Coach Denny Crum retired at Louisville, and that, that was difficult. Um, I coached as Coach Patino came to Louisville. You know, that was difficult. But last year, June 19th, June 17th of 2019, we announced our transition. Well, we had an entire year of 19 and 20, an entire season. And as everybody in this community was so excited, People on this campus were excited. Everywhere you went, oh, your son plays basketball at Bellarmine. Wow, they're going D1. Well, Alex Cook and Ben Wire and Chris Palombizio and Parker Chitty were seniors. They weren't going D1. Mm -hmm. So we vowed to our players we would never utter one syllable about next year. And we didn't. And then our year ends pandemic hits. Wow. I mean, it's tough. I mean, it was tough. But, you know, again, you, 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 you take care of, put those players first, proud of each, all four of them. They've all got a minimum of one degree from Bellarmine, uh, working on two, and they're all going to be successful. And they will always be, have a very, very special place in this program, no doubt. But moving forward, you know, you had to, you had at the same time, you had to be prepared. You had to be recruiting. You had to be scheduling. Yeah. I mean, everything was new. And a lot of it was unknown, not just new. It was unknown. So it, it's, it's okay. The unknown's good. We're ready to go. Now, how has it been for, uh, for us kind of get film on the guys watching the film through the, through the, through the film system that you guys have? Look, kind of kicking up North Alabama, Kennesaw, and Lipscomb and Liberty. And I see what you're up against when you get in conference play here because those teams are tough. I, every night here, I see it right in my backyard. Those games are, are, are a barn burner now, every time I, out you know, there. We, we've done our homework there, but I think what you're going to find in the pandemic in, in general a lot of teams are going to play different. A lot of changes were made because there was a lot of interacting going on uh, clinics virtually and sharing of, of new ideas and maybe new styles of play. So, and then with the, with, you know, the transfers that you always have in college basketball, and then the, this coming January, it looks like there's going to be a lot more of them. Things are going to be constantly changing, but, you know, we'll hold true to playing the way we play. Now, obviously we're playing tremendous competition nobody will have more respect for the competition than we will trust me 
And you, Coach, you've been so successful at, at Bellarmine. Bell, 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 I mean, I saw the record you have, man. Your record in the Great Lakes Conference was, man, was like, uh, man, you were doing some things there. <laughs> so you have a great well, tradition already. Like that. It wasn't always like that, believe me. Yeah, but I saw the record. I said, man, Coach Davenport doing those great things. And you, you've you coached with some great people, like Coach Crum and Coach Patino. I've been watching those games when I was a, a youngster, watching you guys play Kentucky and stuff like that. So how was Bell's playing, playing Kentucky when he was Louisville? How was that? I know that's a big rivalry up there. You the Louisville or you, you, you UK up there? Woo! It was um, – it's tough because um, – there's no words to describe what it gets like going up to that game. From a coaching standpoint, you, you can't escape it. I mean, it's impossible, especially in this day and age of the social media. And I mean, you can't. Um, there's people, sports makes people crazy. And there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of, I know this, my wife quit going to those games. Oh, we wow. would go to take a family when we would play in Lexington. And it just became so difficult. I mean, it was, it was tough. And then it was magnified when, you know, Coach Patino leaves Kentucky and goes to the Celtics. Then he comes back of all places. He comes back to Louisville. Uh, you know, that was tough. I mean, that was tough. Uh, but those were, those were games to be a part of them. Uh, you, you, the, the preparation that went into those games was, was incredible because the stakes were so high. And it was a non-conference basketball game. At the end of the day, it was a non-conference basketball game. But, no, that wasn't your approach. It was incredible. I mean, I, I've said forever, and I, I've got unbelievable respect for Duke and Carolina and NC State and, and that tobacco road, but the greatest college basketball fans are, are right here. And the numbers don't lie. It's 18 straight years, the NCAA tournament, highest market in the country has been this Louisville market. Wow. 18 straight years. The highest market on CBS has been right here. I mean, it's, 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 it's a three week holiday here. It's like three weeks of cry. When you get into March here, it's like three weeks of Christmas. Oh yeah. I feel like the NBA should come there a little, I feel like, come to Louisville. I feel like they should expand to Louisville and play at, yeah. the, at, the, at the Yum Center. And you know, move, a lot of talk. move a lot Memphis of talk. to the, Eastern Conference with Louisville and put yeah. KC and Seattle in the Western Conference, it'll be it'll be perfect. Cause you know, for me from Atlanta, I can come to Louisville and Memphis and see some games and be be back here in Atlanta in a few hours. Well, that's, that's just my yeah, personal there's, selfish. There's, 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 actually, there's a movement here that's led. There's a, an official group called NBA Two Louisville, NBA Numeral Two Louisville, and it's headed up by Dan Issel, a longtime NBA ABA great. You know, Dan Essel lives here, and he—that's his—that's his his passion. I hope it we'll happens. I, I mean, there was just talk two weeks ago about Toronto coming here only for one year, because Toronto, as of right now, this Canada will not allow uh, teams from foreign countries in. It's just like the Toronto Blue Jays had to play in Buffalo. Well, there was a movement trying to get Toronto to come use the Yum Center for one year. Who knows? Yes, indeed. Well, Coach, thank God your conference comes this close to me. So I'll see you at Kennesaw. I'll try to see you at Lipscomb as well because I know those are right in my backyard. I, I still have a house in Nashville still, so I go up there pretty often. I still have a house there. So hopefully I can see you and we come play Lipscomb and Kennesaw. I tell you what, I tell you what, now, Nashville's a heck of a college basketball town with Belmont, Lipscomb, Vandy, Tennessee State. That's a heck of a college basketball town. Middle, not very far away. That's a heck Austin of a P college as well. basketball town. Austin P, absolutely. You got that's, there. That's right. a heck of a college basketball area now. It, it's really underrated. It is. I know we we won a region in 05 when I was at Louisville. Uh, we we played the first two rounds on our way to the final four in Nashville, and and boy that town turned out. It was you know it was easy because Louisville was three hours away and we had a great following, but the, the that town. That NCAA tournament, that launched our road to the Final Four. The city of Nashville was incredible. That week was big time. Oh, yes. Dance loves them some, some hoops, especially NCC tournament week. You go downtown, it's all yeah. Kentucky blue and Vol orange. I mean, it's something yeah. to see downtown on Broadway for sure. Wow. That's great. I mean, I'm excited. And, and 
you know, I know Lipscomb is a tremendous program. Uh, Coach Acuff was at Alabama Huntsville when I was at Bellarmine, and we played him my first two years here. And, I mean, I've got as much respect for Coach Acuff as anybody in the game. Trust me. Yeah, my mom's a Lipscomb grad, and she loved Casey Alexander until he went over to Belmont. <laughs> I, just, I just laughed at her. <laughs> said, you can't have him on your show anymore. He went over to, to, to Belmont. I said, Casey's my guy, mama. I can't, I can't it, it's, it's, it's a heck of a – it's an underrated college basketball town. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, my mom had still said me, me, coach. I told Tennessee State don't over Lipscomb. She's still mad about me about that. I said, look, I had to go where I, I had to go where I had to go for free. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, good choice. You know, it was either Lipscomb, Tennessee State, or here at Georgia State. And I, I said, I don't want to be here in Atlanta going to college. So I go up to Nashville. So I chose Nashville over staying here home here in Georgia State here in Atlanta. So that that she said, we should go with the Lipscomb, son. I said, well, no, nah, I went to Tennessee State. You know, it was free. I went to pay to go to Lipscomb. <laughs> good for you. That's that's a good idea. That's a good that's good financial decision right there. At, at, at 17 years old, coach. <laughs> At 17. <laughs> like, I just chose it. My dad didn't care, but my mom did. My dad didn't care. He's like, where you want to go? Something's fine with me. But mom was like, oh, Lipscomb. I went, I'm a Lipscomb. I'm a Lipscomb. I said, oh, nah, they're not paying for my education. I'm going to Tennessee State. They're paying for it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we say about about that coach all the time. Lipscomb's, my mom to this day still gets, gets on me about that all the time, coach. All the time. I hear it at least twice, 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 twice a week. Yeah, talk. Yeah, you still, you still, still just shun me, son. You shun me. <laughs> So. Well, I married my wife. My wife graduated from the University of Kentucky, and you know, and then I'm coaching at Louisville. And people said, "Well, how'd that go?" I said, "Well, she got her master's from U of L, so she she finally wised up." You know, that's yeah, right. it was okay. Get out there, right, well, Coach Davenport. Thank you for your time this morning. It was fun to talk to you. We got to do this again real soon. I really enjoyed our talk today, Coach. I really did. Boss, whatever I can do to help you out, partner, you let me know. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue But you can't bring the truth to me Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA Okay Maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby. And it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 
3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis.